So anyway, welcome everybody. And uh, in this video, I'm going to try and show you the differences between granite, granodiorite, and diorite. Uh, basically, you can see the differences quite clearly here. But if you actually get a rock, like I got this rock from a locality. This is actually was used for a memorial, a fire memorial. And it's actually not the rock that's actually present in the actual country rock. The country rock is sedimentary rock, so this actually shouldn't be there. So they've actually used this for some building material. And you actually want to identify it. So as I can see, it has large crystals, but we're not going to identify it in this video. We're just going to have a look at some igneous rock and see the differences between these three so the first one i got is granite and i actually do know what these are because they've been identified by a geologist and in these videos i'm just going to pretty much learn a lot more about geology myself so as you can see there's a lot of white texture and a lot of that is uh, all for clays, feldspars, so that's generally potassium feldspars, they're white. So it generally has been between 35 and 90% all for clays. And as you can see, we also have like a smoky colour, which is quartz, between 60 and 20%. So... With those two, they actually make up a majority of the actual rock, as you can see. And then we have some warm blend. And if you put the light, can we actually get some cleavage? So, some cleavage. No, I'm not talking about that cleavage. Hey, show your cleavage, yeah. Okay. And you need a reflection, so they, oh, it looks like. There should be some uh, mica in here as well. Uh, it's actually hard to see with... Well, it looks like there's some up there. So it actually is flat. It flakes off. So it's like uh, a sheet. A flat sheet. And that's how it reflects as well. So... As you can see, a lot of white is quartz. You can actually get a lot of pink orthoclase as well. So, and you get crystal sizes that are actually also different shapes. And this one seems to be, uh, I would say, medium grained. You can get finer grained, you can get larger crystals as well. So, this is a rock. And this rock contains different minerals. So each of these minerals is not classified as a rock. It's classed as a chemical molecule. Because it's all different uh, different types of atoms in it. But we won't worry about that for now. Then we have granodiorite. So this is in between both of them. And as you can see, it actually has a lot more horn blend. And we have... There you go. That is a mica. So you can see the actual quartz. And then we've got the orthoclays. The orthoclays uh, generally is between 20 35%. Then we've got other orthoclays, so plagia class, which is calcium and, and sodium rich and that makes up between 60 and 90 percent of all the offer class and the granite is also i'm oh, not the granite the silicon or quartz is also 20 to 60 percent not silicon the quartz uh, the silicon oxide actually because the feldspars actually contain it as well as some of the other minerals uh, that makes up a different percentage but as you can see it looks salt and pepper shape so we've got horn blend 
Mickers, uh, Feldspars, and Quartz. And because it has more of the Pudgier clays, it actually is a bit darker. So a bit more saltier. Looks like salt and pepper. It's basically what it is. And then we have Biotite. And as you can see, Biotite only contains between 5 and 10%. Uh, 0 and 5% quartz. So obviously there is not much of quartz in this. It actually makes it quite lighter. And the Plagia Clays Feldspar is about 90 to 100%. So that's why it actually is quite a dark crystal. And Orpha Clays Feldspar is about 0 to 10%. As you can see, there is a hell of a lot more mickers in this one. And also horn blend as well. A lot more horn blend. And it actually makes it quite a dark crystal. So if we see the difference between granite and biotite, you can see granite is quite white and biotite is quite black. So that is basically how you can identify it. But... There is also other rocks that you might actually get confused with this. So this is a uh, rhyodactite. This is an extrusive igneous rock from the Donabuang rhyodactite. And as you can see, uh, it actually looks a bit like... Uh, diorite. So it's actually not diorite. It's basically in between these two right. So in between quartz and, and not quartz, in between granite and granodiorite. So that's basically what it is. But what happened to this one was it's um it fell as ash to the ground, and then it was still hot when it actually fell down, and then actually remount crystallized. So the crystals reformed because it partially melted. And as you can see, it has a, looks like there's a mica there, yep. Yeah. And it's a lot harder. The crystals are a lot smaller because it actually didn't have enough time to actually form the actual larger crystal system that we see in this quartz. So that's why it looks a, a bit greyish colour. So the crystals are actually quite small. And so that's where you might get confused so when you get a rock you look up on the geological map whereabouts you got it from um if it's a country rock so a rock that is actually formed at that place unlike this one which was formed in another place so i think you might have a fair idea what this actually is now and uh we'll have a look at a few localities in victoria that actually contain that type of rock so if now we're going to actually have a look at some graphs. Graphs are awesome. So, whoops. Okay. So I'm going to use another rock here. Move those rocks away. And zoom out and up. And as you can see, we've got a table. So this is a table of elements so doo -doo 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 -doo. so the three rocks that we actually looked at are the granite granite diorite and diorite and the ones at the top are the actual extrusive so these are formed from lavas that come out of the actual ground these are from plutons that form baffleliths that are in the actual ground and as you can see, the plagio clays actually increases from granite to granodiorite. And the cutoff is roughly about in between there. And this actual rock, the actual rhyodactite, is in between there, so roughly in there. And as you can see, you got muscovite bi biotite mica. They do change, they peter out in the diorite. Amphibol increases, uh, the quartz decreases, and the orpha clays. So the 
it decreases and almost is non-existent in the actual diorite. And here we have silicon dioxide by weight. So granite's roughly 75 and it decreases as well. So that's so in here the rock is actually quite dark. In in here the rock is actually quite light. So that so and here we have the yeah get rid of that. So here we have a QAPF diagram. So amphibol, plagioclase, quartz, and feldspar soids. No, we don't worry about underneath here. So this is actually zero for quartz. It's a hundred percent for quartz. In this one, we got ten percent plagioclase, ninety percent plagioclase, and for the other one, just turn it around so it's a ten percent amphibol, ninety percent amphibol. So we've got granite, ten to sixty-five percent plagioclase. Then 65 to 90 percent, so we've got granodiorite here, 65 to 90 percent plagioclase. And as you can see, diorite's actually down here, so it's 90 to 100 percent plagioclase, only 0 to 5 percent quartz. So it doesn't actually recognize any other minerals. And ooh, look at that, that that's pretty big. I think I'll turn the light off. Nope, the same. So, and then you got other minerals that you can see here. So we've got gabbro. Where's gabbro? So we've got gabbro in here. And quartz gabbro, quartz diorite. So, you know, diorite also is up in this one as well. And then we have day tonight so anyway so this is how they actually classify different types of igneous rock uh, so if you have any input please put them down below and uh, thank you very much for watching my video on how to actually classify the type of rock that you're actually trying to find part one so oops Let's go. So we've got granite here, granite diorite. Oh, let's have a look, and then we have diorite. So you can see the actual differences are quite stark. And for some other rocks, yeah, because the variety actually is quite different all over the world. Uh, you might actually get something that that classifies a granite and might look like a no diorite or close to it and you might get something that's like a chemically a granodiorite it's probably a smaller crystals that looks like a diorite anyway so hopefully i can find some of these rocks in victoria i know they have a granodiorite and some granites but diorite you know, I haven't checked every geological map, so we'll just see how we go as the world goes on. Thank you very much, and have an awesome rock hunting time. Thank you, and goodbye.